Welcome. Today is August 6, 2025. The South China Sea has always been a flashpoint, but now, a new and more dangerous era has begun. Hypersonic and advanced missiles are no longer futuristic. They're here, reshaping alliances and redrawing battle lines. These weapons, capable of traveling over five times the speed of sound, can strike targets across vast distances in minutes, making interception nearly impossible. The Philippines, due to its strategic location, is now at the epicenter of a high-stakes arms race between global superpowers. We'll break down the missile systems deployed by the US and China, and examine the Philippines' own efforts to build a credible defense. Understanding this new reality is crucial, as decisions made today will have global consequences for years to come. We'll focus on the facts. The events of 2024 and 2025 that have brought tensions to a boiling point. This includes military deployments, diplomatic standoffs, and the risks the Philippines faces by hosting foreign military assets. The story is complex deep alliances, national sovereignty, and the shadow of great power competition. The stakes are higher than ever and the path forward is uncertain. Join us as we unpack the hypersonic missile crisis in the Philippines. The Philippines is now on the front line of a technological arms race. The age of hypersonic warfare has arrived in Southeast Asia, compressing time and distance, Threats are now minutes away, not hours. This shift demands a new approach to defense and diplomacy. Powerful, foreign-operated missile systems are now on Philippine soil, while rival powers have deployed their own advanced missiles nearby. The Philippines has responded by acquiring its own offensive missile system, but each move triggers a counter-move, escalating tensions. Understanding this action-reaction cycle is key to grasping the immense pressure the Philippines faces. We'll lay out the confirmed facts, the missile systems, their capabilities, and the timeline of their deployment. No speculation, just the reality of the strategic challenges ahead. The truth may be uncomfortable, but it's the only foundation for sound policy. In this environment, facing facts is not just wise, it's essential for survival. Let's examine the facts on the ground. In April 2024, the U.S. deployed its Typhon missile system to Luzon, fundamentally altering the region's security landscape. Typhon is mobile and ground-based, able to strike Chinese military targets in the South China Sea and even on the mainland. It fires Tomahawk cruise missiles and SM-6 missiles, the latter capable of speeds over Mach 3.5. The public handling of Typhon in Ilocos Norte confirmed its presence and signaled U.S. resolve. This deployment gives the U.S. a land-based option to challenge Chinese dominance and aims to deter aggression. But it also makes the Philippines a priority target for China, sparking intense debate at home and abroad. The U.S. is shifting to a distributed force posture, spreading assets across allied territories to complicate China's planning. For the Philippines, this deepens its alliance with the U.S but also ties its fate to the rivalry between Washington and Beijing. China's response was swift, accelerating a program to deploy hypersonic missiles on a new class of attack submarines. The YJ-21, or Eagle Strike-21, is a hypersonic anti-ship ballistic missile with a range up to 2,000 kilometers and speeds reaching Mach 10. These submarines, equipped with vertical launch systems and advanced stealth, can remain submerged for weeks, making them hard to detect. The South China Sea's deep waters provide cover, allowing China to threaten U.S. and Philippine assets from hidden, mobile platforms. Unlike the visible U.S. Typhon, China's submarine-launched missiles are unpredictable and can strike with little warning. This capability directly counters the U.S. advantage and raises the stakes. YJ-21 can reportedly carry a nuclear warhead. The underwater domain is now a new frontier of hypersonic warfare. For the Philippines this means facing a threat that is both invisible and nearly unstoppable. The risk of escalation, including nuclear, is now part of the equation. The Philippines has responded by modernizing its defenses, acquiring the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile from India. 
the $375 million deal brings three batteries, with the first delivered in April 2024. Brahmos travels at Mach 3, with a range of 290 kilometers, giving the Philippines a credible anti-ship and land attack capability. However, while Brahmos is a powerful deterrent, the Philippines' air defenses remain limited. The Spider system can counter traditional threats but is ineffective against hypersonic missiles like the YJ-21. Even with U.S. Patriot launchers deployed in May 2024, the ability to intercept advanced hypersonic threats is unproven. The Philippines now has a sword and a spear, but its shield is dangerously thin. Hosting U.S. assets and fielding BrahMos increases its ability to strike back, but also its vulnerability. The central dilemma more capable yet more exposed. The arms race has outpaced the country's defensive technology. The Philippines is stronger but also at greater risk. The balance between deterrence and vulnerability has never been more precarious. The U.S. and its allies recognize the urgent need for defenses against hypersonic weapons. The Pentagon is racing to develop new interceptors like the AIM-174B Gunslinger, an air-launched missile based on the SM-6. Gunslinger, introduced in July 2024, can be fired from fighter jets, providing rapid, flexible response far from shore. This layered defense approach, early detection, mid-course interception, and terminal defense, is the emerging strategy. But as of 2025, no single system can reliably stop hypersonic attacks. For the Philippines, this means continued reliance on the U.S. for advanced protection. The country lacks the resources to develop such technology independently. Its security depends on the hope that U.S. advances will be shared or deployed to its territory. Until then, the Philippines remains vulnerable, armed, but not fully protected. The race for effective defense is far from over. The missile deployments have fueled a sharp escalation in diplomatic tensions. In September 2024, China condemned the U.S. Typhon presence, accusing the U.S. and Philippines of destabilizing the region. Philippine officials fired back, pointing to China's own missile buildup on artificial islands. By January 2025, President Marcos Jr. acknowledged China's missile superiority and offered to remove Typhon if China ceased its aggressive actions at sea. The situation intensified in April when China arrested three Filipinos for alleged espionage, a move widely seen as political pressure. Manila denied the charges, insisting its focus was self-defense. These incidents highlight a dangerous reality, communication is strained, trust is low, and every move is seen as aggression. The Philippines must balance its alliance with the U.S. while managing a volatile relationship with China. The risk of diplomatic miscalculation leading to conflict is higher than ever. Each side interprets the other's actions in the worst possible light. For Manila, every decision is a high-wire act. The margin for error is razor thin. By hosting the U.S. Typhon system, the Philippines has made a calculated gamble, gaining deterrence, but also becoming a prime target. Beijing now sees the Philippines as a forward base for U.S. power, making Luzon a likely target in any conflict, especially over Taiwan. The country is caught in a security dilemma. Defensive moves are seen as threats, prompting escalation from rivals. China's hypersonic armed submarines are a direct response to U.S. deployments. This action-reaction spiral increases instability and puts the Philippines at the center of great power rivalry. The presence of dual-capable systems like Typhon and YJ-21 raises the specter of nuclear escalation. While the Philippines is non-nuclear, it's now part of the nuclear calculations of both superpowers the ultimate risk loss of strategic autonomy. The U.S. alliance brings security but also obligations and constraints. In a crisis, the line between defense and offense can blur, drawing the Philippines into conflicts not of its own making. This is the heavy price of seeking security in the shadow of giants. The stakes for Manila have never been higher. The Philippines is pursuing a multifaceted security strategy. 
its alliance with the U.S. under the Mutual Defense Treaty remains the cornerstone, providing technology and guarantees it can't secure alone. But Manila is also diversifying, strengthening ties with Japan, Australia, and other regional partners through joint patrols and intelligence sharing. The official posture is comprehensive archipelagic defense, using all tools to protect sovereignty. The BrahMos missile is central to a porcupine strategy, making the country a hard target. Diplomatically, the Philippines champions international law and seeks coalitions to uphold a rules-based order. The path forward is a delicate balance, modernizing its forces, managing alliances, and navigating fraught relations with China. The presence of hypersonic missiles makes peace and stability more challenging than ever. The choices made today will shape the nation's fate for decades. If you found this breakdown valuable, subscribe, like, and share your thoughts below. Thank you for watching.